Welcome to day number four of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to 3D model a whiskey bottle. You'll learn how to create offset planes, use the law feature, and how to create threads. To get started, we'll draw a center rectangle on the top plane. I'll click on the center origin and drag out. Then, I'll type in 2.5 inches for the width and hit tab to lock in the dimensions in place. I'll also type in three inches for the length followed by the tab key to lock in the dimensions. Now we'll want to add rounded corners to our rectangle. So if you remember in the last tutorial, the quickest way to get the fillet sketch command is by hitting the keyboard shortcut letter S and typing out fillet. So after we hit enter to activate the fillet command, We'll punch in 0.25 inches and we'll select the lines that make up each corner. At this point, I'll go ahead and stop the sketch because we need to create another sketch just a few inches above it. To do so, we'll call the Offset Plane feature located under the Construct drop down menu. Now the offset plane feature allows us to create construction planes a specified distance away from any pre-existing planes. So you can see that after we activate the feature, there is only one option in the offset plane dialog box. So we can either select the sketch we just made as the plane, or you can always reference the origin planes in the Fusion 360 browser. So I'll go ahead and select our previous sketch and type in four and a half inches for the distance. Now we can use this new construction plane to draw another rectangle. So I'll grab the center rectangle tool once again, and this time I'll make it a bit bigger by punching in the dimensions of three inches for the width. I'll hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place, and then I'll type in 3.75 inches for the length, followed by the tab key and the enter key. And once again, we'll activate the fillet sketch feature and punch in 0.5 inches. And then I'll go ahead and select all of the corners. So these two planes will make up the base of the bottle, but we'll also want to create a few more sketches in order to create the stem of the bottle before we go ahead and use the loft command to join them all together. So let's create another offset plane by activating it from the construct dropdown menu. This time, I'll go off the top sketch and I'll punch in 1.5 inches for the dimension. I'll hit enter to escape the command, and now we'll want to draw a circle on the plane we just created. I'll go ahead and hit the letter C, which is the keyboard shortcut for center circle, and I'll click on the construction plane. Now that the sketch has been activated, I'll click the center origin, and I'll type in 1.75 inches for the diameter, and then I'll hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place, and I'll hit the enter key to escape the command. Now I want to create one more circle that will be the top of the stem. So I'll go ahead and stop the sketch again, and we'll repeat the previous steps. So I'll create another offset plane off the top sketch here, and I'll make this one three and a half inches away from the previous one. I'll create another center circle, although this one I'll make slightly smaller with the dimensions of 1.25 inches, followed by hitting the tab key and the enter key. Then I'll go ahead and stop the sketch. Now if we look at this from the home view, you may be able to start to get an idea for the shape that we're going to create. So if you remember in day number two, we created a beer bottle using the revolve tool but our whiskey bottle is not a symmetrical cylinder shape. So we're going to use the loft tool to join together the four sketches that we just created. Because the loft tool creates a transitional shape between two or more sketches or planar surfaces. I'll activate the loft tool by selecting it from the create menu. You'll notice in the loft dialog box that the first thing it wants us to do is select the profile. Now the order we select the profiles does matter. So I can select the profiles from top to bottom or bottom to top, but I cannot select them in a random order or it will create a really crazy twisted shape. 
So I'll go ahead and select the four sketches from bottom to top. And as I select them here, you'll notice that it started to join all of the sketches together to create a three-dimensional shape. Now, if I look at this from some different angles, I'm really not happy with the overall shape. So the first option to explore is rearranging or dragging around these construction lines that make up the loft. Now, these were all generated when we selected the four sketches. The problem with doing this is oftentimes you'll end up with some sort of twisted results here. So as a better alternative, we can actually create our own paths to be selected as the rail, which you'll notice here in the bottom of the loft dialog box. So I'll go ahead and hit cancel to undo the loft command and we'll create our guide rail with a spline command similar to how we used it in day number two when we created the beer bottle. So after I activate the spline feature, I'll need to select this center XY plane located under the origin folder of the Fusion 360 browser. Then I'll draw a spline from the bottom to the next two points, and then I'll take a moment here to just readjust the lines until I'm happy with the overall shape. Next, I'll trim the top of the spline by activating the trim tool with the keyboard shortcut letter T, and I'll select the line here. Then I'll hit L, the keyboard shortcut for line, and I'll draw a straight line for the stem of the bottle. Now the law feature can be quite frustrating at times, especially when you're using guide rails. One of the most common errors happens when the line you select as your guide rail is not one continuous line. So to ensure that we do have one continuous line, we'll want to first make sure that there are black dots at each point, which signify that they are joined together. Before we go back to the law feature, we'll want to copy this guide rail over to the other side. To do so, I'll draw a line to be used as our center line, which I always like to draw away from the object so it's out of the way. And then we'll activate the mirror sketch feature where we have to select both parts of the line and then select the mirror reference line. And we'll click OK to exit. Now if we stop our sketch and look at this in the home view, you'll see that we have a much more defined skeleton of our whiskey bottle shape. At this point, we can go back to the loft tool by activating it under the create dropdown menu. And once again, I'll select the profiles from bottom to top, and then I'll select each rail. Now this should make the loft command more precise, resulting in the shape that I actually want. Now if we look at our shape, we'll see that the bottom of the bottle is completely flat, which isn't very realistic. So I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter F, for the fillet modify feature, and I'll select the bottom outline here to give it a nice rounded edge. I'll type in 0.2 inches and I'll hit enter to escape the fillet command. Now before we shell the bottle to make it hollow, I want to add a small stem at the top where we'll add a thread in just a minute. So I'll hit C, the shortcut for center circle, and I'll click on the top of the bottle. Then I'll type in 1 inches for the dimension, followed by tab and enter. Now I'll hit the keyboard letter E to extrude the circle up half an inch. And I want to double check that the extrude operation is set to join. Because if it's set to something else, then I'll have trouble shelling the entire object. At this point, I'll shell the bottle by activating the shell feature from the modify dropdown menu. Then I'll select the top of the bottle and type in 0.09 inches to create the thickness of the glass. So let's go ahead and click OK to exit and now we'll add a thread to the top here so our whiskey bottle can be sealed off with a cap. To create a thread, I'll select thread from the create dropdown menu and I'll click on the surface of the cylinder shape that we just created. Now in the thread dialog box, I'll first want to click modeled, which will make sure it actually 3D models the thread shape. Otherwise, it will simply just give a graphical appearance of a thread. So if we didn't click modeled and we went to 3D print this or export it, then the thread really wouldn't be exported. 
Now the second option in our thread dialog box is the length. So it defaulted to be full length, but if I uncheck this, I can make it slightly shorter by dragging the arrow up or by typing in 0.37 inches for the length. And if we take a look at the rest of the options here, they are standards for different types of threads, whether it be for bottles, screws, machinery, and so on. So for the purpose of this beginner tutorial, I'm simply going to select ANSI Unified Screw Threads and 1-8 for the designation, and then I'll click OK. Lastly, I'll right click on the model and click Appearance, and I'll simply drag the clear glass appearance onto the model. Now I can also change the environment under the display settings to dark sky, which will make the glass appearance stand out a little bit better. Thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button below if you learned something in this video and click subscribe to be notified of the next video where I'll show you how to 3D model an ice cube tray using the pattern feature.